Oh, here, this is Joe. Joe, you can unmute yourself here. Thanks for being patient. You're up next. Hey, Bart. Thanks for taking my call. Yeah, no problem. So where's this game played out of? Uh, this is the Venetian. Uh, it's a 3-5, nine-handed, uh, $1,200 buy-in. So 3-5, nine-handed, it's a $1,200 buy-in? Yeah, because they run a weird, like, 2-4, and that's like an 800, and then oh, the one okay. three is like a 3. Yeah. Are you a, are you a Vegas reg? No, no, I was a parks guy and I'm just going to round in Vegas for about the next few months and see how it goes. No, I was just kind of wondering because I mean, again, like I'm, 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 I've been around for so long. There was a time and I, I wonder if people have forgotten about this, where a lot of people refused to play at the Venetian because of um, Sheldon Adelson. I don't know if you're familiar with that, Joe, but no, I'm familiar with that. Dude, Sheldon Adelson is now dead. And uh, Sheldon Allison was like the number one guy in the U.S. that was like basically preventing online poker from coming back. Um, he would fight against it, especially at the federal level. And a lot of people are like, fuck the Venetian, would never play there. But they get some games. I mean, it did hurt them. But uh, now I wonder if people even know. Some of the youngsters don't even know the whole story. But okay, so nine-handed $1,200 buy-in, okay? All right. Yeah. So the table just opened. So I don't really have any uh, idea of uh, the other players. Yep. Um, the villain ran on my left. I'm in the uh, like MP2 and he's probably in the hijack. Okay. And he is, this is a confirmed Euro. <laughs> okay. Heard confirmed him, Euro. Uh, yep. yep. Heard a drink order. So yeah, he's, yeah. he's from Sweden. Yeah. Um, so I have queen, jack of spades and uh, I open to 20. In MP2. Yes. Correct. How deep are you guys, by the way, what's the effective stacks? We both just bought in for twelve hundred. Okay. We're this is like the third orbit, so we really haven't okay. played any hands. So twelve hundred effective. You go twenty queen jack of spades and MB two. Okay. Yeah, the villain's in a hijack, and he three bets me to sixty five. Okay. And just call. So get three bet to sixty five, and you call. I think that's pretty standard here. Not a huge three bet. You've got a suited Broadway. Obviously, you're out of position, but you know twelve hundred effective. I think we would play this. Um, a lot the same way as a call. I mean, I guess once in a while you can throw in some four bets here, but I think not knowing anyone too, it's fine with a call. Yeah, the table just opened. I don't want to get too crazy. Uh, yeah, so the pot's 140, and the flop comes uh, three of spades, nine of clubs, ten of diamonds. Ten of diamonds, nine of clubs, three of spades, right? Right. So you're open-ended with a backdoor flush draw and a three-bet pot on 10, 9, 3. Okay. Is there any merit to leading here? Because I didn't lead. I check, but... Uh, you don't do a whole that. lot. You don't do a whole lot leading in three bat pots, um, all that much. I don't think. I think if I wanted to play this hand aggressively, I would be doing a fair amount of of check raising. I mean, I have done stuff like lead, lead sets and things like that. I just oh, and actually, you know, on this type of board, you might get. I, I just you got to figure like, are you going to get folds from ace king and ace queen by leading an ace jack? Like they do have backdoor, so you're probably not going to get the type of result that you're looking for. I'd, I'd much rather have an ace high type of holding, go for a bet and then, and then check race on the back door side. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. Uh, so I check with uh, the intention of check raising. Okay. Uh, and he just checks behind. Okay. So here it checks and it goes check, check. So now you're saying this is a real Euro. You know, we don't necessarily, we don't necessarily know that much about him, but there are, definitely people that will sort of be board aware and do some checking with over pairs. Probably not that much on this board, just because like there's only really one combo of two pair that you're going to have, which is 10, nine suited and, you know, sets of tens and sets of nines be more, more apt to be like on like 10, nine, seven, you know, like six, seven, nine, stuff like that. So I, I wouldn't think that this would be a board really that you'd want to do a whole lot of checking back uh, with over pairs. So, he probably has leaned a little bit more towards non non paired holdings, I would think. So yeah, I'm hoping for some uh, king queen, maybe some pocket sevens and eights, and he just doesn't want to get crazy. You would think the king queen would bet though with two overs and a gut shot, but maybe not. Um, turn six of spades. So you turn the world. Before you tell us what you're gonna do, here here's my thought. Here is is that. So obviously you want to get the ace highs to fold out here. You've got so much equity here that I like a large bet because it makes it harder for you to be bluff caught. If you bet something kind of cute, like one third, um, I think that there's a lot fair amount of players that are going to convince themselves that they might call with like an ace high type of holding 
here. And then you get into some awkward situations at the end, because if your opponent is aware and they see everybody or they don't expect other people to like being betting like just one pair for value, like 10x, they actually might call you down a bunch at the end when the draws break out. So I would tend to go a little bit on the larger side, but I don't think, what did, what did you end up doing here on the turn? Uh, 50. Yeah. So went 50 into 140. So yeah, like one third. Cause what, it, like, what is that trying to accomplish here? <laughs> I guess I'm just trying to build a pot and I, and I'm definitely going to bluff if I miss the river. But don't you want the folds now? Don't, I mean, you, you have so much equity in your hand, right? Like you're, if you're up against an unpaired, you know, ace king, I mean, I know there's dead cards and stuff. When, when a 15 out draw is unpaired versus another better unpaired hand, it's almost like a flip. I mean, it's really, really close in equities. Even with one card to come, you might have as much as like, you know, again, because Ace King, you know, he might like say he's got like Ace Four and doesn't really block anything except on the Ace side. Um, you, you, you know, it's you've got a boatload of equity, and um, I, like I said, I wouldn't want to get sort of hero called down now. So whenever you've got a boatload of equity, usually the play, especially when your opponent has shown some weakness, is is usually betting pot or over bet. So that's that's probably what I would have really would have done. Wow, pot. Okay, that makes sense. I mean, I see what you're saying. I would have probably gone at least 125 here, to be honest with you. And by the way, I, I would probably do the same thing with 10x here, though, too. Maybe a little bit exploitably smaller, but you go 50. Okay, and he calls? Yeah, he calls. And the river is uh, five of clubs, so, so I break. So the, Okay, so the pot's 240. And now the river's the five of clubs, so you've, you end up here with nothing. So do you see how, like... It's it's interesting here. Now, 7-8 is already there on the turn. I just do wonder here that if he's sticking around with some ace-high types of holdings or sticking around with any types of like modicum of like showdown types of hands, like sevens, eights, I mean, those things pick up a gut shot. But God forbid, like if he had like, well, obviously fives would be a set, but say he had like a small pair, he'd have to like three bet some small pairs. Say he had like ace three, or something like that that didn't see bet off for some reason. Um, now, if he if he doesn't think that like ten x does a lot of like just you know three street betting, he's anything that kind of bluff catches, and his bluff catching. I guess my point is that I feel like his bluff catching range on the turn becomes wider because of your small bet. That a lot of those hands might continue to bluff catch now. So I would kind of would rather have gotten him those folds off the smaller, the weaker portions of his bluff catching hands on the turn because now we're ending it up with well i mean i'm not saying that i wouldn't bluff but i'm just saying that it wouldn't surprise me if you get called down by some shit or something like that that stuck around here on the turn and that all goes back to the fact that in live poker people don't make thin value bets in three bet pots with like 10x here so when they go like if you were to bet like 200 here you know he might get very very curious because he might think that this only represents like two pair plus you know or something like that so um what'd you do well, that makes perfect sense. Um, so as I messed up the uh, turn bet, I probably messed up the river bluff, which I went uh, 175. Oh, okay. So, I mean, let me ask you this anyway. question. Let me ask you this question. So here about 175. What would you do with ace 10, queen 10, king 10, jack 10, if you played it this way to the river? What would you do? Mm, I'd go for value probably about maybe, maybe a little bigger, maybe like 200. So you actually would have won larger that. for value. Yeah, if I had value, I would win. Yeah, much larger. Well, not much larger. Like over two, I think I would have broke 200. I mean, here's the thing. Betting anything that's over like half pot makes it harder to play against you because you're, you are you don't have a polar river betting in this situation. That's what we want. To, when I say sometimes we want to depolarize on the river in a given situation where it looks like 10x would be the best hand. If to, if you really want to improve your game, and we try to do this a lot on Crush Live Poker, we, we always say you should de, be, do, do more depolarizing in spots like this where... You can have 10x for value because if this guy knew you, let's say that there was history and you knew each other and he knew you could go thin for value at the end, it makes it much, much harder for him to bluff catch with a hand like sevens here or, you know, ace five, you know what I mean? It's something like that. That's a good example. Like maybe he sticks around with ace five or something just because he thinks you're full of shit on the turn because, because you're going to be betting a lot of hands that are in between. But if you're up against somebody who's only polar here and polar being where I would say would be like two pair plus because it's a three bet pot, then it's much easier to bluff catch against that type of holding because you're going to have only two pair plus and then a lot of these broadways that miss out on uh, on straights. So, 
That's, that so, makes perfect sense. So, okay, so you go 175 and? He snap. snap and I mean snap calls. He dropped the one chip right in the middle. Snap, snap calls. Call. Okay. And? I turned over. I say, uh, nice call. I tap the table. And he turns over the, the king three of hearts for bottom pair. Uh, I mean, what? I don't know what that was. <laughs> well, I think if, I if, you, if you, you know, ris- listen back to what I just said, if he thought that you were going to be very sort of not betting 10x on the river, he arrives with very low showdown value, but it doesn't change anything. And I think this actually goes back to the turn because I think if you actually bet on the turn, the sizing that we suggested, King 3 cannot call or should not call, right? Correct. Yeah. So, yes. so you yes. win it on the turn and now because you went small, you end up, like I said, you know, rewind it back what I said. Uh, you just end up with this situation where those low value bluff catches arrive on the river and nothing's really changed. If so, now he's going to be there with those low value bluff ca- catching hands and and bluff catch you on this run out. So, yeah. So one turn, one turn bet screws up the whole hand. I should have like- Yeah, but I mean that happens in poker. But you know, just learn from it and uh, don't make that mistake again. Awesome. Thank you so much. All right, Joe. I appreciate the the uh, call. Thank you very much.